So what's up guys? So in yet another, you know, swing and a miss for the American Christian right. A mother of 10 got upset over a June 2017 edition of Teen Vogue. The woman who goes by the activist mommy apparently had an issue with the magazine over a supposed article that contained uh, information and stuff on how to have safe anal sex. And she essentially claims that the magazine and the editors, you know, have their heads in the gutter and that, the, that them and the, the, the magazine are just garbage, essentially because they're trying to teach kids about, you know, sodomy. They're trying to teach kids, you know, this immoral behavior. What I found really funny is what her solution was. I'm not going into a big tirade, particularly on this person. I'll save some of that and some comparisons for the end of this video. But basically, I just found it funny that her solution to it was the very neoliberal, which ironically comes from a woman that's very conservative, as you can tell, but this whole neoliberal idea that you go out and boycott and protest these people, that'll show them. You'll go out and boycott and protest a capitalist enterprise to basically do what? To basically have, have everyone laugh at you and just buy more stuff? Yeah, it's not going to work. Her solution to this problem is to go to the local store and ask the owners of the managers, so the people that are pretty much the people that own the means of production and thus capital, to remove these magazines from their shelves as a way of hitting this company, you know, where it hurts in their wallets. Well, here's the thing. Teen Vogue is not just a enterprise that is, it's not just an enterprise made for just that. It, there's Teen Vogue, there's Vogue, and whatever other enterprises that they have on tap. So her solution was to go in and basically was to go in and have these things removed from their shelves. Okay, great. You have them removed from their shelves. So are you going to go around the country and have every shop remove this from their, their shelves? Because I'm pretty sure you're the only one really bitching about this and whoever is like-minded like you. My solution to the, pro to the whole issue is as much as I would normally say, hey, let's, you know, go after capitalism, let's tear it down and stuff like that, I'm going to side with Vogue on this issue for once and actually say, instead of boycotting it, I actually encourage everybody, my viewers and anybody watching, go out and buy as many Teen Vogue magazines of the June edition as you can, and basically just show this company that you support the idea that somebody, at least, is teaching kids about how to be safe from STDs and how to have safe sex. Because, you know, abstinence just continues to work so well in America, right? So, my, that was, that's my solution to the issue. Now, my final words on this whole docket is that the activist mommy is basically this person that I've always said, yeah, she basically exhibits what I've always said for, for a while. And that's, that's that she, like many others, are a product of the American Christian far right. And they're preaching about all this stuff about, you know, how things are, you know, they preach about sinning and they preach about, you know, this garbage and blasphemy. And they're also the people that typically tend to use hell as a scare tactic, well, you know, which only works if you happen to believe in a the Abrahamic faiths. You know, of course, they don't seem to care about, you know, Islam is in that case, and Judaism is kind of tolerated within their community. 
ultimately though for anybody else it's not exactly something that really works for them and for the most part people just laugh at them they're the people that basically go out spewing their racist their homophobic misogynistic or other forms of bile to try to make whatever point that they're trying to pass off and usually they fail miserably at it the real garbage that i that personally i feel is people like like this lady and other like-minded individuals the people that support Donald Trump, who come carrying a cross and who are usually wrapped in some flag and stuff like that, they are like the biggest, you know, blowhards, you know, that I think we have on the face of this planet. There's blowhards in other countries, but no one blows harder than these idiots. And of course, it has to happen in America. These are the types of people that, as I said, come carrying across, they're the ones that come carrying across and wrapped in the flag of what we've always said is what happens when fascism comes to America. These are, and by the way, these are hate symbols. Yes, the U.S. flag is a hate symbol in its own way. You want to know why? Because it's a flag of imperialism and it is flown during the worst genocidal periods of history, of modern history especially. The flag is definitely that sort of a banner. The cross has been used as a it has been used as a torture device against people who did not believe in their God, or worse yet, has even been used to scare people who don't share the same skin tone as those, you know, involved. In other words, it has also been used as a symbol of white supremacy. And you can see that in certain white supremacist symbols. So, ultimately, my whole idea about this is that it's these tools have been used as a whole issue to save people. They've been used as, you know, a mantra for the ultra patriotic to or the bourgeoisie to basically do nothing more than to you know perpetuate this this nationalistic rhetoric so and of course you know Donald Trump is just a narcissistic egotistical asshole that panders to these people's narrow-minded viewpoints so ultimately you know, the activist mommy is just nothing more than another one of these right-wing Christian conservative blowhards that has nothing better to do than sit in her pampered little lifestyle and bitch about something that really is not even that relevant. And if you really want to make that much of a, dis a difference and stuff like that, it's not going to be boycotting anything or going to the owners of production and, and telling them, can you remove the this thing, this particular magazine? We find it offensive. It's one of those things that there's a lot of things people find offensive, and yours is not any any more special than anybody else's. You want to sit there and call people snowflakes? Well, you, ma'am, are a snowflake yourself. Get over yourself. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. This has been NorCal. So much love, the sorry love. Nike Bono, Sarik Sonas Nazar, Zemlu Bono.